Hi everybody. My name is Kai Basu. I'm City of Cover. Today I have uh, Josephine Smith, uh, who is the Enterprise Application Analyst from Northrop Grumman, with me for this webinar on the importance of process in IT service management or ITSM. Uh, let me give a quick introduction of Joe. Joe is an Enterprise Application Analyst in the Northrop Grumman Enterprise Shared Services. She supports process improvements, projects, and configuration around SAP financial module and related add-on software, SAP data archiving, and the Covair implementation. In today's webinar, we have divided into two halves. In the first half, which is actually the shorter one, I will give you an introduction of Covair as well as the introduction to overall process and process implementation. But the real meat of today's webinar is actually is in the second half, which uh, Joe will be presenting. And she will tell us how she has actually implemented a very successful process in her organization using Covair. And we'll learn a lot of new things from Joe during that period. So let me start with the very first question is, what is Covair? So one way to look at Covair is it is a box of a number of different tools in the areas of application lifecycle management, or ALM, and IT service management, or ITSM. In the ALM side, we have the requirements, the issues, tests, risk, release, uh, etc. And in ITSM, we actually have an implementation of ITIL. So today, actually, we'll be focusing more on the ITSM side um, in, in the, with respect to the process, but the processes are also applicable to ALM. Actually, we have a very powerful process engine called OmniProcess, which can be used to create multiple different processes for each of the built-in applications. So for example, for an incident management, you can create a process. Actually, you can create multiple processes. Or for requirements management, you can create multiple processes, etc. And uh, during my presentation, actually, I'll give you a uh, overview of our process capability and how easy it is to create processes just by drag and drop using a Visio-like interface. The third component of Covair is its uh, integration technology called Omnibus. So using Omnibus, you can integrate uh, uh, your tool, uh, different kinds of multi-vendor tools with Covair. Uh, so these tools uh, can reside anywhere in the world, running on any kind of platform, even behind the firewall, because Omnibus uses web services for integration. And finally, Covair is also a platform, which means you can create your own business applications which are as powerful as any of the built-in applications. Power our end users to both configure as well as administer Covair. So Covair basically has three products, ALM Studio, and we have got two uh, versions of ALM Studio. One is a more traditional methodology uh, like iterative and the waterfall, and the other one is actually an agile implementation basically using Scrum. And then we have the ITSM Studio, which is the implementation of ITL version 3. And the third one is the Omnibus Integration Middleware, which is used for integration. And you can buy any of these products either independently or in any combination. So with respect to the ITL process areas, Covia kind of covers almost all the different important process areas. Um, and uh, one particular area, let me talk a little bit about it, which is the configuration management CMDB. Covair can work with the other CMDB products in a federated way, which means that the data can be actually distributed in a multiple different CMDB. And using Omnibus, we can integrate them. But other than that, with respect to the rest of the ITIL process areas, uh, Covair can cover all of them very well. Now, talking about the process areas, uh, Basically, with respect to the ITSM Studio, uh, these are the kind of overview of that. You can do all those service requests, incident, problem, change. Those are the process areas I was talking about. And then what is really great about having all those applications in one tool is that you can have multi-level traceability 
for the change management. So you start from the service request, go to incident, then problem to change, and you can trace back from the change back to the service request in a single tool. Uh, we also have a built-in service catalog, which basically means that you can uh, expose uh, a self-service uh, portal to your customers or to your employees uh, with both IT services as well as non-IT services like the HR service or travel services, etc. Uh, then we, of course, have the automated workflow using OmniProcess, which can be used to create multiple different processes and automate them. We also have a built-in dashboarding and reporting capability, so you can create multiple different dashboards for each of these applications. Even you can have a dashboard to show different process uh, matrices in a single dashboard. And finally, using Omnibus, you can integrate best of breed other IT tools with your ITSM Studio. Now, talking about the process implementation, let's talk about how to really plan for the process implementation. So first of all, one good question is, what is a process? So often, the process is not just the, the steps we go through, but there are many undocumented beliefs and customs you have which you need to document to really understand the process you are following. You know, one interesting thing is that when I meet with our customers, and often we sit down uh, with their process group, and they start talking about the process they follow, and we find out there are so many uh, knowledges uh, in a shared memory which is never documented, and it is basically the say that they say that they actually you know John knows it best because he knows how it is done, but it is never documented. So it is very important to document those processes. And when you are documenting the process, you have to document what are the roles involved. Uh, maybe your process actually cuts across multiple different locations of your organization. Uh, what are the different activities? And for every activity, what is the input and output of that? And if you can actually draw it, then it will be really great. And for drawing and workflow, you don't need to do much. You can actually draw it on a piece of paper, really, uh, or white, uh, whiteboard, or, uh, for example, uh, using Visio. And another very important thing is that while you are actually documenting the process, list out all the assumptions. Because there are often many assumptions we make, but those we make implicitly. The moment you make those assumptions explicitly, you will see that actually you can implement those assumptions as part of the process itself. One other important thing is to involve the stakeholders. So rather than trying to impose a process from top down, involve all the participants, or at least the, uh, the, the representatives of the different groups or different teams which will be involved in the process, so that at a later stage, they cannot come back and tell you that I was not involved in the process. That's why I won't participate in that process. So that is actually very important. And another important point is that when you have got so many different kinds of groups involved, uh, there has to be some simple protocol how the information will be handed over from one group to another group. So we have designed the process, let's say. Now the next question is, how do we implement the process? So the very first important point is that make the implementation phase-wise. Don't try to implement the whole thing in one shot. That's uh, actually a very big advice. And when you do it, the very first process, establish a very simple process. And over the time, you can improve over that. As a matter of fact, the process definition itself is an iterative process. You cannot come up with a perfect process at the first time. As a matter of fact, there is nothing called a perfect process. That is another, uh, another very big kind of wisdom. Uh, also, in your organization, you have to establish a culture of process. Often what happens is that you may have a group where you have a very, very talented people, uh, very skilled people. But if there is no culture or process, often people just do it themselves. Uh, they, are, they are heroics, but that doesn't uh, always kind of work uh, to the benefit of the whole organization. So establishing a culture of process so that people are working with each other in a consistent way every time is very important. Also, you have to make the process transparent so that people, everybody knows what is the process rather than making it a part of the process kind of hidden from the other group often kind of works against you. And one lastly, very important thing, you have to have some way to measure the success of your process. That means you have to know that as your process is being, being uh, enforced, 
how it is doing. So a couple of ways you can actually do it. For example, for every step, you can actually 